welcome to another episode of my little outside the box. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to stamp. We're going to stamp with paint and create some fun backgrounds and we're going to make, of course this little guy, we're going to do uh, it's all stamping and a little bit of painting. We're going to use the uh, DecoArt Media products and uh, let's get started. So we're going to start with an 8x10 canvas. And I added a little tag, just a little manila tag, just for fun. And you're going to need some either makeup sponges or I like this little guy from uh, the Tim Holtz collection. You just put these little foamy bits on and they're actually washable. So I like using these. You're going to want a brayer, my trusty old brayer, and a bunch of stamps. I got some coffee stamps. So this is a coffee one. These are all stamped in this. And the stamp collection that I used is this one with all these fun little marks on them. It is a Stampendous line and marketed under the end studio but it's in Stampendous. It's one of their new ones actually. It's a lot of fun and we're going to use this one and we're going to create, uh, mine's very well loved. This one we're going to do some um, lacy sort of some embossing. We want some embossing powder and you know if you happen to have any old polka dot stencil and of course you can't do any of this media stuff without baby wipes um, you will want your baby wipes you will love your baby wipes so get those and of course uh, DecoArt Media products tinting base uh, matte medium and you know a little palette knife I got another brayer too, it's a bit bigger, because this one, my old one sticks. I don't actually wash them very well, I just wipe them off. So we're going to get started, basically just with the background, and, and it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're not going to do anything really fancy, we're just going to pour. So we're going to take our tinting base and the DecoArt Media Burnt Umber. Right there, burnt umber. So what I'm going to do is, and, and I'm not just going to bother sealing the surfaces. I'm going to seal it. If your surface is rough for whatever reason, you know, by all means, just throw a coat of, uh, you know, all-purpose sealer on it. Or you could even do a coat of gesso. If I was doing bright colors, I would uh, definitely put a coat of gesso over top. But in this case, you don't necessarily need to. But you can, depending on what surface you're going to use. Um, these are just uh, eight by ten wood panels. They're, I find them actually uh, just a nice size to work with. So we're going to take our board and just going to plop little bits of the uh, tinting base and this is actually your solid that's in the paints because if you look at the DecoArt fluid acrylics they're basically just pigment. Um, very very um, concentrated in the color. You can dilute them and they still don't lose the color. So that's one of the reasons that I use the tinting base because it, what it'll do is it'll take this from being totally transparent to making it into like a nice brown and, and by using the brayer with it it's actually going to give me some different colors. So I love my little brayer technique. This one's old, it sticks. A little four inch one is my favorite. So I'm going to go back and forth. you're going to find that the because the board, the wood quite often, is not always perfectly level. So you can end up with sort of some funny little bits. But that's okay. Just keep working it until you're happy with it. And then I can add a bit more tinting base if I need. Maybe up in here because I need more color up in there a little here and there. You can add more brown if it gets really white or if it gets really dark. It's up to you how you want to proceed. So it's the look that you want. Whatever makes you happy. I did this because it just kind of created an old uh, board and one of the things about playing with this whole mixed media thing is it doesn't have to be totally out there. It can be quite controlled, quite neat and tidy and it just creates sort of some fun backgrounds and it doesn't always end up the way you want it to end up which is basically how this piece ended up in the first place there's a lot of I was having fun just playing trying different things 
Of course, another thing you're going to want is a heat gun. That's in my way right now. And I'm putting pressure where I want to smooth it out a bit. And see, I ended up with too much white over here, so I'm just going to add a little bit more brown. The burnt umber. You know, bear in mind, too, you can do this entire project with um, your regular acrylics, the decorate acrylics. Like, if you didn't want to do the mixed media on here, you can use your regular acrylics. Say this one here, maybe you would want to mix um, my other brayer technique, the one that, that I've done in the past. You could just use, say, burnt umber and maybe fawn or something just to, to get a different look. If your brayer gets too gooey, you just wipe it off with your baby wipe. Or if you're into journal, like playing with a journal. I got this now. It's my little, I just keep adding like icky bits in here. One of these days I'll actually use it to paint something with, but you could take your brayer if it's got good stuff on it and, and uh, just add it into there. Create a bunch of fun little papers. So I want to just add a little bit of brown. So what I've done is I've poured a little bit onto my palette, which may or may not be in the frame right now. Right there, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run my brayer through it because I just want the brown. There. So I'm happy with that. You can keep playing with it till you're happy. Same technique I've always used. It's just we're using different product. So do that. Wipe my brayer off. You don't have to. I'm going to. One thing about the media product is it actually does dry quite quickly, so that is pretty much dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer the background with just a bunch of different stamps. So I started out with, oh let's see, maybe this, this X marks was kind of fun. And I did this one with quinacridone gold. You can use any colors you want. So say if I'm going to use like the media, but say you could use like burnt sienna or one of your oranges or something just to have some fun. So what I do is I'm going to take my makeup sponge. Got an old one here. You just cut the ends off if they dry on you. Thing with these is you're going to want it quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of tinting base on my palette. Just so I can go into it if I want to darken the color a little bit. And you, when you're going to stamp with the sponges, you have to bear in mind that the sponge is going to soak up quite a bit. So you're going to want um, two or three different ones. That's Miss Lily. She's talking to everybody, as you can hear. She's in every video. So if I pick up just a little bit, just a little bit of the uh, tinting base, I end up with just a bit of a more orange. And you don't have to, to do the whole thing. It doesn't have to be solid. Just sponge a little bit on and just randomly press. You should get a couple of stamps. There's no no pattern, no nothing to it. Don't even think. We did turn our little brain off. Sponge a little bit more on. Just some random spots here and there. I know it's, in some ways it makes no sense because you're just going to layer a bunch of stuff that's going to disappear. But it actually does help in, in sort of the, uh, the texture that we're going to get. I can get one more, I think, from my sponge. So I end up with three or four sponges of, different, of all my different colors. Yeah. That works. Things get covered. So I'll take a baby wipe. And I'll just wipe my sponge off or my stamp off. And sometimes, you know, if you're going to be doing this, keep a little bowl of uh, soapy water, like an old uh, Tupperware type tray or cooking pan or tinfoil pan or something that you don't like. But a little bit of soapy water, because this dust all your acrylics. And once I wipe them off and I know I'm not going to use them again, I'll just throw them in the, uh, the soapy water and just let them soak for a bit. And then I clean them in the sink with soap and water. So that was the orange. And you know, it really is just patterning. It's just creating, having some fun. Let's pick another color. We'll use another. These are all the, the stamps from 
the um, the Marks collection of stamp pendants. It is going to be in your. It is in the product list. It's it's a great versatile one. If you want one that's just going to be versatile to to play with and and uh, use on a variety of surface projects and things because it's not defined. And let's see. Going basically what I'm doing is I'm creating it based on the color palette that I used. So then we're going to get our green gold. And I'm going to actually show you how these work this time. Same way. We'll add a little bit of green into the background. And it's going to load up too. So you want to make sure that you've got a fair bit of green on there. Where are you? There you go. So we're going to add more. Get it nice and juicy. This one, because it's not quite, it's a little bit brighter, it may not need the tinting base. Awesome. Just plop it down where it lands. Nobody cares. All it's doing is just creating some interest in the background. Just building it up. You know, it doesn't have to be one way, it could be another. I don't add too much. I just want just a few. Like try not to create any form of a pattern. A little bit off the side maybe. Sure, that'll do. Same thing. Wipe it off. And there, I like to wash them good just because I don't want paint building up in all the little uh, all the little sections here. I hope I'm not moving away. Sorry if I'm moving off camera. I can't see the I can't see the little monitor thing. Okay, so that, and then I used uh, my favorite blue, which is cobalt teal hue. So we're gonna throw a bit of that, same way. And uh, see these things, I can just pop them off. Sit them to the side because if I want to go back into the green, I can just pick that one back up again. Ultimately, you have a few of these. I've, I have others, but I can't find them right now. I think I washed it. And just stick them on their little Velcro thing. Pick up the blue. And another one from that Marks collection. Just a bunch of little diamond shapes and stuff. Same thing. You know, this is actually a lot of fun. Like everybody else, I was a little bit hesitant. I've always been fascinated by how they do mixed media. So of course I've been watching tons of videos. I've got a few favorites that I've been been um, following. And, and I just love what they do. But I do know it can be scary. And I do know that it can be quite out there. But I think we, there's, a, there's definitely a place for it in what we do. And we've always done it. We've, we've always had a form of, of doing mixed media to some form or another like even just adding like snow text onto a picture a project or or you know even tying the old days when we used to put buttons and and uh, bows on things same thing we always did something and there is a place for it in our decorative painting which I've been sort of slowly exploring and, and I gotta tell you I am having a blast I find it extremely relaxing less stressful you can create a really unique background for any of your projects that you've painted like say if, if a piece has just a, a plain background there's nothing saying you can't do you know your your very detailed painting project over top of a really funky background and then just start adding little colors from the from the project into the background as you're painting and it will all come together so let's see I did green and blue oh magenta Primary magenta. Oh, I like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the, uh, let's see, we'll do some little X's. Or, nope, save the X's for if we want to add color. I think we'll do polka dots. I'm going to add a few random polka dots. Of course, they don't have to be scary at all either. Get your trusty stencil brush out. Pick up a little bit like we always do. Take our little excess off on paper towel. 
In this, I am just going to do some little random patches, nothing fancy. Just kind of go like that, and I get just a few. I don't want too much of the pink because, of course, that's going to be, you know, in the hearts. I'm not even, you know, I'm not even looking. I'm just throwing this down, keeping it more towards the outside, only because, of course, I am going to have the hearts. Minimal, see? Minimal. Okay, so then... So now the next part, once I've got all those on, is I'm going to actually change this again. And I dug out my, my coffee stamp. And you'll bear in mind, all these stamps that we're using, you can use whatever you have. We're just creating marks. I mean, if you want to use um, a variety of stencils, uh, you know, pieces of corrugated cardboard, any of those fun little things. I mean, the sky's the limit because they're not defined. As for my little coffee stencil, well, I just have it and I think it's super cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with black. And with black, the, the trick is because I want to avoid my stays on ink pad. I'm just, the idea with, with doing this really is to show you that we can use the tools that we have. We don't have to run out and buy everything on the market for our mixed media or our, our projects and stuff. You can, you can never go wrong with one good permanent um, stays on ink pad. So if you have one, you can use it if you prefer. But I am going to make my very large attempt at stamping with the black. And the nice thing is, is that when we're doing this, is we don't really care. We don't necessarily want a fully defined pattern. And with the black, it's going to have to be fairly juicy. I love that word, juicy. So I'm going to get my little ink pad quite juicy. And I'm going to go on here. And, you know, I'm only really inking half. I don't need to use the whole pad. I don't want to have a big square stuck somewhere. And let's hold our breath. Awesome! And it doesn't even have to be straight. These are just gonna play peekaboo out from underneath things. That's Miss Lily again. You know, by the, as the years, the months go by, whatever, you're gonna really get to know Miss Lily. She's in every video. Sometimes I post a picture of her. She has a cute little white Maltese. Absolutely ferocious, let me tell you. And I'm just randomly hoping to pick up a little bit of negative. There we go. So that's done. So, and once again, wash with our baby wipes. So what I want to do now is I'm going to seal it. And the reason I want to seal it is because once we throw a coat of matte medium, it will seal everything that's on here. So everything that we do for the next layer up, we can actually wipe off. So this is what I, what I recommend in any of these, if any stencil backgrounds or stamped backgrounds or anything that you're doing where you're working with different layers and you kind of go, geez, I really like that, I don't want to mess it up. Throw a coat of the deck or a matte medium on it. It's, it's, it's flat, it has no sheen whatsoever, and it will actually make your, seal your project, allow you to trace your pattern on over top, wipe off, you know, bad floats, or, or if you put a stamp on with, with, not with the ink of course, but with paint and you went, ooh, I didn't like that. You can just wipe it off. It is so awesome. So let's get one of my little handy dandy brushes. When I'm doing mixed media stuff, I'm, I like my Dynasty brushes. I've got this black silver line, which I'm really liking for moving the media paint. I'm one of those nice lucky people that just happens to have a few extra brushes kicking around. So just wash them really good but the media paints the fluid acrylics and stuff do not bother your brushes at all they're a little bit more pigmented but if you clean them regularly you won't have any problems it's just all it's all uh, acrylic so I'm going to throw a coat of this on then I'm going to let it dry it only needs to dry for a few minutes and then we're going to then I'm going to trace my pattern on and we're going to use that and we're going to do a lot of shading and start adding in um, our colors and things like that so there sun's going down so you're going to notice a change now when i come back and this is dry in, in the lighting it's going to alter a little bit so yeah just a little thin coat once it dries you can't even see it you can't even feel it so there you have it 
Okay, I'm back. So it's nice and dry. We have our coat of the matte medium on. And now it's perfectly fine for, it's not sticky, it's not anything. So we can actually take our pattern and trace it on the way we normally would. And I've got my, my drawing drawn out. I'm just going to move this out of the way. What I did is I just centered the coffee cups. Found a nice little happy place for them all. And I've got, what I do is I just repeat the heart. I just flip it around and put it on the other side. But I did move them a little bit. So put that in the middle. And I look at the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here. And that's how I'm going to balance as to whether I think it's center or not. And I'm not even going to look at that. Because you always look at the farthest point on this side and the farthest point on this side when you try to center your surface. Unless, of course, it's a look that you're trying to go for. In this case, I want to make sure that I get both my hearts on there. So you can get your uh, graphite paper. Everything else is the same from this part in. Get our well-used, well-loved piece of graphite paper. Slide it under there, like so. And get our stylus. This one will do. And do your basic, you just your trace around your basic shape outside. Because that's all we want to do. Always put my hand down and hold it so I can have a peek. Okay. So it is on there, but not very good. So one of the things um, that I've talked about is some of my instructions. Is we can either try to get these lines on a little bit darker, and we can look for them, or I also have darker piece of graphite. And this is what I like to do is I'm going to take a clean piece and I'm actually going to do this. Check this out. This is the second. You can do it two ways. If you've got the graphite paper that's going to make it nice and dark for you, then by all means do it. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to get my pen. Because everything is done with my, with my permanent markers. Preferably not a Sharpie. I do prefer, um, the Sharpies will work. I do prefer either I, my IdentiPen or the, the permanent pit markers, anything that's permanent. And I am going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to trace my heart. And you can do this in your pattern too. All you have to do is just trace out your design onto the tracing paper, which is basically almost a tissue paper type thing. So there's my two hearts and here's my coffee cups. I'm going to cut them out and decoupage them on, which is going to save me a lot of time and a lot of frustration. Get a good little pair of uh, paper scissors. You know, and just because I, I have, I can go get a really good piece of graphite, but I don't want to at this point. So I'm going to cut these out. This is great, you know, especially if, if you know if you're going to prep a whole bunch of pieces. You could print these off on your uh, on your printer on tissue paper. If you're going to, like, especially for craft sales, if I trace all of this stuff on, it's just oh, it takes so much time. So at this point, as I cut these out, I'm going to speed up the camera. So I'm, I'm just going to watch me cutting these out.
So I've got that cut out. So now I'm going to go back to my piece right here. And I can stick that on there. Throw that on there. And you know, if you wanted to, you could do this before we put the, uh, the matte medium over top. You know, six and one half dozen on the other. Because it's not transferring anyway, it's up to you. If you think you can trace onto the background with your dark, then by all means, go ahead. And if you can't, well then this is a great op great alternative. And my hearts. One on one way. And I reversed them so that they would kind of going. Because it doesn't really matter, they're going to get covered anyway. And because I can sort of see my mark a little bit, I know where they're going to go. We're going to go right in there. We're going to go in there. And also, one of the other fun things is that we're also going to add a little bit of a doily. So on the original, I have a doily. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create one. I'm just going to give it sort of a little half circle. Just tearing. This is Tim Holtz tissue, but you can use uh, the regular tissue paper. It doesn't matter. It's going to get lost anyway. I just keep a a drawer full of little odds and ends. And that's what we use them for. So I'm going to stick that right about there. So I can get my matte medium out. And it's just going to get lost. It, it has no real purpose other than some texture, some fun stuff. So we're going to get out our matte medium. And I'm putting it on first because the cup actually does sit on top. It's going to kind of go like this. So the cup's going to sit on top of it. So we might as well get this on first. And get my great old brush out. Slap my map, and I like to hold it in place with one finger, just to get so I don't lose my place. So I'm gonna put some matte medium down, and I'm gonna tap it down with the brush while it's still got goop on it. Lift the other side up and see it sort of stuck, and I'll do the other side. Now I'm not worried because of course you know we all know it dries clear, and then smooth it this way, right out towards the end. If you can tuck a little underneath, if any of your little ends are lifting up. And then I quite often talk about having like an old credit card or something. So every time these great companies send me little goodies in the mail, those cute little plastic cards, or you know our fabulous room keys, they're great. You know, get these genuine fake capital ones. Some of them are better than others. I just give it a smooth. And then wipe it off. So when I talk about old credit cards, you know, save those room keys from the hotel. Expired credit cards, of course, you know, I would probably cut those or something, but still. So that's that one. So now we can go ahead and put put the cups on. Because I can sort of see my lines, I'm pretty good, but otherwise it does get a little bit tricky to get these guys on somewhat straight. So just use your judgment. Perfect. And the same way, the same brush, I'm just going to work from the center out and glue it down. That way it's going down nice and smooth. A little pressure. And see it dry, it's drying clear, so we've got our lines, the tissue paper's dried clear, so it's not even really like, you're not going to see the paper really on top at all. we we'll go back and get our handy dandy little card. And I always push from the centers toward the outside. So basically, I'll bring it up a little closer. You can't even see that the cup is there. So this is a great little trick for these busy backgrounds. And the heart, same thing. The heart sits basically, you know, using your, your pattern as a guide. We'll put our heart down. I love this matte medium. I think that DecoArt seriously needs to make this stuff in a gallon jug. It is the best. Pull it up a bit. You have a little bit of movement with it, but not a lot. Once it starts, once you get that top coat in there, it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm kind of smoothing it as I go. Fairly quickly, you don't want to allow yourself too much time. I hope 
hopefully we get this guy centered it's fairly good as the other one looking at my distances again but your pattern use your pattern as a guide and you know I'm not too concerned if it's not perfect it is you know it's just a whimsy there then I get my little card out and if you got a big wrinkle this one has a big wrinkle while it's still wet I can actually still pull it there we go So you can barely see it, but the pattern is on there. Great for fast painting. So we're going to let that dry and then we're going to go and do a whole bunch of shading and some painting and a little bit more stamping. And this isn't going to take long. Actually, you might even hit it with the heat dryer. You don't need to have a heat gun. The reason we're going to use a heat gun is that we are going to do some embossing. And when I did the uh, doily sort of the doily look and the, the smoke and just like a little bit on the hearts, I did it with an embossing gun. So if you emboss, you know, the, the Stampedis embossing powders and some fun stuff, you know, it, it's and again, it's up to you. You can just stamp it, call it done. You can stamp it and add glitter. There's any number of things we can do. We'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, so it does dry fairly quickly. So now we're going to go and do some shading. I have five projects on the go on my desk, so I'm very limited to my desk space right now. Whose fault is it? That mine. Yours, Deb. Okay. My toys away. So with the, the oh, I, before I go any further, I just want to mention that I did do the outside of this and only when I had this still loaded with the juicy black I just quickly went around and just did the out used up all my paint around the outside so that way I was able to get sort of the outsides finished so we're going to do this again but this time we are going to use the burnt umber we're going to have some fun same thing and I love using this tool you just grab it in the, the Tim Holtz stamping section at Michael's or whatever or another one you can use I think I've killed all mine but you can use uh, what can we use maybe you've got one of these old things some of these kicking around some maybe you got one of these kicking around anything that's kind of smooth you can even dry brush you know if you've got your big stencil brushes we can dry brush as well I'll show you both actually and oh and these things these are super cool if you have these i'll show you this too there's any number of ways we can do this okay so we're going to go back into our our burnt umber and we're going to go around the outside so i'm going to show you let's see i'll show you, show you with this first that we won't dirty that so with this i'm going to load it up with our burnt umber. Then I'm going to go around the outsides. Almost like antiquing the whole thing. Just swirling it. I like the way it just warms everything up. And then, and then we'll get a wet one, which we can use as well. And you can kind of clean and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. If you found it too dark, it's so easy. Gives you that antique look, but yet it's going to tone it down, especially if you did get a little more than you wanted to. And see, nothing is coming off from the bottom, which I think is great. Also helps to blend in if you had any little swirly marks. So it's nice and soft. I like that. So that was with this. And you would do the same with this. Or 
A stencil brush you could do the same with. Deco art. Cheap like borscht. Okay. And then we're going to go back and do what we always love to do is our normal everyday stuff. So we're going to shade. We love shading. And we're going to shade the way we do everything else with our burnt ember. That, and of course we're going to have our paper towel. Has to be folded just right or I can't shade. It doesn't work. Just saying. Okay. So I shade around everything before I paint it. Doesn't matter what I do. Everything. Why do I do that? I don't really have a, a valid reason as to why I do it. I just like to do it. I like the look that I get with it. Um, it helps me find my, 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 my design, especially on like a busy background like this. And I just like the way it, it makes my stuff pop. It's a personal preference. And actually, you know, it really goes back to when everything was antique, like uh, Maxine Thomas or something. I could not. I didn't have the oil paints. Um, I couldn't figure out how she did it, so I started shading around, and I just found that that gave me the look without having to do all the, the technique. So I'll speed this up again while I'm doing this. Of course, going around everything. Cool. Okay, so that's them. So now we can go ahead. I'm just going to dry that quickly just so I can keep going. Hmm. So what I do now is I'm going to paint the hearts and we're going to, going to base coat all the pieces. Oh, while I have the burnt umbra out, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to do my little tag, which I've lost already. This little guy. I'm just going to show you this quickly. Since we still have uh, this paint out, I'm going to show you how we're going to antique this little tag. And this is so simple, too. Check this out. It's going to wash. And just wet it like that. be optional. I, I put it on, but you, you don't have to. I thought it was kind of fun. I stuck it there. really don't know why I stuck it there. I just did. Because I could put the name of the project on it. So that's how that little tag is done. Just a wash. So we're going to go into our primary magenta and tinting base. Because this is what's going to make the paint solid. So if I try to paint strictly in the red, I'm just going to get one solid red color. But I would rather have the hearts, you know, the different tones of the heart like I do with base coat shade highlight. And the trick with here is that I can actually use one paint, get my three, three to four values out of it without having to go and have four paints. I'm using one paint as opposed to, uh, to like four. And that's all I do. I just take a little bit of the tinting base and I'll stick it to the side on my palette. I just stuck a little tinting base there and then I've got my magenta here. 
and I mix as I go because it, it, it doesn't really matter a whole bunch. So what I'll do is I'll take my tinting base, I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to take my red, and I'm just going to blend it in. And I keep going until I find the color that I like. So it's almost like, um, I think that was sort of like uh, two-thirds red to one-third of the tinting base, and that gives me a nice uh, mix, and that's sort of what I do. You can stick with something similar to that. It's not going to be good or bad one way or the other. And see how the color changed? See how nice and light it is? Because that's we've put the, the solid into it now, and we've, we've changed the coloration. Now I'll show you. If I, when I go to make more, it's not going to affect it a whole lot. I have to move everything around, it's what I do. See how it covers really well too, and that's just because of the solid in it. It's, it's made it, it more opaque. The paint itself, on its own, is very transparent. And even then, there's a transparency. Like I like that everything's showing through there. That's sort of part of the whole mixed media thing. If you don't like that, you know, you can paint your two to two coats over top. That's up to you. I'm not going to because I like things, the things showing through, as opposed to like when I'm doing my regular painting. I don't like to see some things showing through from underneath. So I've used up all that pink, but I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to go and I'm going to get another bunch of the, the tinting base and I'm going to get another brush mix of this. I'm mixing right into the same spot that I had before. So I can actually sort of tell that I'm getting the same shade. If it was lighter or darker, I would, I would see it. So that way I know I can just keep painting. And I've still got my tinting base, so I'm going to go into all the colors basically that I had used, which is going to be the blue green and the quinacridone gold. These are the three colors that we're using, along with, of course, the red for the heart. So I'm going to do my green, just grabbing whatever color is handy. Same mix, take a drop, go into my tinting base, take the paint off my finger. Tinted base, pick up a bit of my green and mix. And the more green you add, like that might be too too uh, light for me, you can add, keep adding more green until I'm happy with it. Okay. Yeah, paint my green cup. my lines oh no look you can just take that off how cool is that this is a little fabric brush you can buy them at Michael's just a little old scrap uh, fabric it's just got really stiff little bristles and I use it for wiping off corners and it is great on here because you can clean anything up just in the fab in uh, fabric painting section or q-tip q-tips work just fine I just lucked out and I got that years and years and years ago. Wore the nubby right off the end of it. I'm gonna go into uh, like a small, like a number two round or, or a two liner or something like that, just to do the, uh, the handle.
we'll do, okay, we'll do the blue one. The thing is that you don't need a lot of paint. Like if you notice how much I'm wasting there, normally I use just a tiny, tiny little drop. But I'm gonna be using these paints for shading and stuff, so I've kept them on here. Um, but normally, just like the, 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 the head of a pin, like just a little drop this big, that's all you would really need normally if you're just gonna paint something this size. Same thing, take my blue out, mix it in, get my light blue. It's always going to go to a light blue. Just the intensity of the of the light blue is what's going to vary depending on how much of the tinting base you have. Whatever you end up with, you end up with. Just remember the uh, the one third to two thirds, basically, one brush load to two brush. Right or wrong way to use these paints. You know, this is just how I've been using them, and I and I, you know, I've just been finding ways to use them with all my regular painting. This is what I come up with. Same thing. My little round. You do have to clean your water a lot more often when you use these colors, that's for sure. Pigments are way higher. Okay, so then, this last one I did quinacridone gold to create kind of a yellowy color. If you do buy these paints and you have them around, you're going to find that these colors that I'm using are your most common colors. The uh, green gold, cobalt teal hue, and quinacridone gold. Oh, everybody uses those. These were the most popular colors. I'm mixing this till I find a color that I like. And this is just with the tinting base. If you were to add like white paint, then you would you would see a difference in color as well. It would it would lighten it considerably. So they let those dry. You can heat dry them with heat gun. I just want to let them dry um, naturally here for a few minutes. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start all our shading. Okay, so when everything's dry, we're going to go back in and start doing all our shading now. And me and my, I like to have my, my messy, messy place. So when I did this with the um, tinting base, is it allows me to create a softer pink. So now when I go in and I do my shading, I'm working with the same color, but I'm going to use it just regular strength, full strength, regular strength, and shade the way I normally would. My paper. 
And of course you use whichever shaders that you prefer. I'm an angle shader person. I like those. And I shaded the left side of everything. I just pretended that my son is, of course, is way up on the side over here. And I'm going to shade it a couple of times. That way it allows it to get a little bit stronger. First one, because it's very strong pigment. Beautiful paint. And then we're going to go over here. You notice I'm almost doing it like a watercolor. My brush does have a fair bit of water in it. That's the way I shade. You know, you do what's comfortable for you. And then I'm going to mop it just a little bit. There. Let that dry. And then, of course, We'll work with our original colors for the, the cups. So that the uh, quinacridone gold was this one. So I'm going to shade it. And see, just a tiny little drop of paint. This was more than I needed, of course. Strong. It's like a C stroke. Finish up in there. Then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to go all the way up the other side. And I'm going to get all three of my colors going first. So I'm going to get my full strength green. There. And that's all I need, just a tiny little drop. Full strength green. There. And full strength blue. Tiny drop. If anybody knows me with my regular paints, that's about what I use anytime. I really like my tiny, tiny little bits of paint. Okay. So now we'll start working our way back up. I'll do handles of course and we're going to go inside the coffee cup there and work our way working our way back up to the top turn it sideways go inside my cup I'm not even wetting my brush again because the, the this stuff will move on its own. This is quite runny. Really, you know, pick up water very rare. If I feel it starting to pull a bit, then that's when I know I need to get water. And the quinacridone. Such a beautiful color when it's full strength. Hopefully my blue should be dry by now, so I'll go back down into my blue. Do that shading. Okay. So that's the first. Now we're going to deepen the shading on this side again. I'm going to go over them twice only because I want it just to be that little bit um, darker. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
and then walking the flows down. That's what I can do with the water and as long as you have your mop brush handy you can blend those right out very quickly just by patting at it. And there's a little lime but that's okay because I'm going to get rid of that. There is an easy way. Okay. Enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my my um, my white titanium white. And I'm going to mix it a little bit with the pink, with the primary magenta, to create a, a really light pink. So I'm going to go get that and see, oh, blend. Oh, I need a clean spot. And just pick up just a smidge, like just a tiny, tiny bit, and blend it into your white. We're going to get a really, really soft pink. Okay? I turn my piece upside down. And I'm going to do my highlights. And my brush is quite wet, and the reason for that is because I do want to soften it and blend it out. Get my mop quickly. See? We're changing the color. And you know, I still got enough. I didn't even make very much, but I got just enough to do what I need to do to come up on this guy. Pick up a little bit more, use what's there. Gently pad. And you know, I went outside the outside the edges here. That's okay. You know, we just grab our little little handy tool, which I can never find. Or even the, the brush that we just had. You can just go along and just clean that up. Actually, we'll use use your Q-tip or your fancy little brush that I have here. If you want to sharpen that line up a bit. It doesn't matter because we're going to be painting over it anyway. So now we're going to go back and we're going to reshade these now that they're dry. Go into the same colors. Let's see, we got quinacridone gold. Just want to deepen these up a bit. green a little bit. I know the green is not showing up but there is another step and I'll show that to you. Dry those up very quickly. And 
And now I'm going to put a little bit of the um, little bit of white down in the bottom. Now that I have the white out. To enhance where this is going to be down here. And that's going to be basically a second like little doily that it's sitting on. And then of course again, you know, if you're doing this with just your regular acrylics, just use your basic shading colors. You know, refer back to any pattern where you would you would have a variety of shading colors and work directly off of those. You can use the uh, Deco Art website if you wanted to just to you know get an idea on some of the colors. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little wash here, just a little wash because I want this a little bit. Take my mop very quickly, pat it out. If you don't like it too much, you can soften very gently with your fingers. And that will soften that up. Okay, so I took a moment while my paint was drying to get a nice fresh bucket of water, clean my palette paper, clean out my brush a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is instead of using several different colors for shading and darkening and stuff, we all wanted to limit the palette and that's one thing you can do when you do use the, the um, fluid acrylics is you can limit your palette. You don't have to have you know, five different colors to base coat shade and highlight the heart. We've worked with basically the one color, we've added white. So the next what we're going to do is we're going to start adding Payne's Gray. And this is how we're going to work to deepen our shading in all of our things. So I'm going to put some Payne's Gray. Ooh, that came out fast. Oopsie. That was stuck. But we're going to use a lot of Payne's Gray, so that's okay. And we're going to put out a little dot of my quinacridone gold and my green gold. Instead of going in, you know, getting a dark, dark burnt umber or something, some sort of dark orange, we don't need to. We don't need to go get my dark blue. And notice it just the tiny little bits, and of course the red. And it's amazing what you can do. So there. And the white we don't need yet, and we don't need the black. So. This is how I do this. I'm going to start on the heart. So I've done the heart primarily with the uh, primary magenta. So I'm going to pick up just a tiny little drop of the paint gray. And I'm going to mix that. Just go into my float because the thing is we don't need to make a pile of paint. I'm just going to use a small bit. So then I can go in and I can do my shading and it's going to give me that darker float that I like so much. And I'm going to go and do my shading. See how that has darkened it? See how that pops much better? And mop it just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, darkened that up nice. Go right back in here. I don't even need to reload my brush. I'm just going to go back in here, pick up that paint, and I'm going to go and do the other one. And if I want more, go pick up more. Because there's basically still a lot of water in there. I mean, you can, you can clean your brush and reload each time if that's what you're more comfortable doing. I've just sort of figured out how many times I can get away with this. It's like testing my limits. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to darken a little bit more up top. Yeah, that's much better. So easy. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go into my quinacridone gold start blending it out as if I was going to float and then go and get just a tiny little drop again of the uh, Payne's Gray and it's going to create this actually a, a nice color. I really like this. It's a nice warm brown and I'm going to do my shading. And of course keeping with everything is on the on the left hand side. So even though I've started my shading up into here I'm not going to go all the way that far. Mop that out. Pick up a bit more. Do there little handles and of course inside. How fun is that? And ha look how easy that was. That was so easy. 
and then same with the green. I'm going to start my float with my green. You see that? Yeah. And just a touch of the paint's gray, and I'm going to get a nice dark green. It's going to allow me then to darken. Mop softly. Go here. And of course, we turn it sideways. You see my coffee? Yeah, that's brand new. Girl's got to have that. And I'm going to go inside. Okay, there's inside my coffee cup. And same with the blue. Just tiny bit. And see how we're using such a small amount of paint. It's just amazing. You know, you think, okay, I don't want to buy a whole bunch of paints and stuff, but you'd be surprised how far this stuff goes. I'm going to make a bit more. And once you have these, you know, they're not expensive paints to buy and they last a long time. Even though they're tiny, because you're using such a small amount. Okay. So we've given us our little darkness. Now what we're going to do, so I'm just going to give that a quick dry, move my coffee. Okay, so now I'm going to get my white, and I'm basically going to do the same thing for some highlights. Sort of what we did on the heart already. The only difference being is that I've already done the heart, so I'm going to go, we'll do that one last. But So now I'm going to take my white and blend, blend my white out. And you always start with the color the basic shading color and then in order to darken I'm just going to go now and just pick up a tiny bit of the green just to shade this just a light light shade. You could probably go the other way around it probably wouldn't hurt and then I'm just going to go here create my little highlight mop it and you know you'd be surprised if your finger it comes very much in handy if you find that your floats are, are a bit on the harsh side. along the top of it. Screw that up. And you see how easy that just wiped right off because I have the matte medium on the background. Then I smudge so I'm just going to take that off with my handy dandy remover tool. There. Got my little highlight going. Quinacridone gold. A nice soft little peachy color. And I'm only using my finger really just to, to blend where I want to make sure that I didn't want any harsh lines. And then, of course, highlight along the top. So you can use your finger. Your finger really is just a mop or a blender. You know, I, I actually I hate to say it, but I did. I did play around with some backgrounds and mixing paint with my finger, and I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun. Not something you'd want to do. I certainly wouldn't want to paint with my finger all the time, but it's amazing the control you actually can have with that one little finger. 
You can't get some of it with a brush. I like about using an angle shader is that you can just use that little point to get just a little tiny float sometimes where you want it just a little watery float how fun was that and then I'm just going to take the white and just give my final highlight up on the top of this heart And I actually, when I teach, I do, do tell people to use the finger to quickly blend out if there is a, a, a dark line on your floats. God's paintbrush. Yeah. How fun was that? Then I'm just going to re-highlight the tops here just to enhance a little bit. Okay, how easy was that? <laughs> so then, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our burnt umber and we're going to darken all our shading around everything. And this, we're going to go over everything, doesn't matter what it is. And with burnt umber, which is what we use to go around the outside and everything, I'm actually going to now mix it with the Payne's Gray, same way I've been doing all my floating. I don't need to get very much again. So I'm going to take my burnt ember, blend myself my spot, pick up a tiny bit of Payne's Gray and blend it in. It's just going to create almost like a, tra uh, a darker traditional burnt ember. And to test it, we're going to go around the outsides. Watch it get darker. And I just keep picking up the mix as I go along. I'm not too worried if it's a little darker or a little lighter. And I just like the richness that it creates. Sort of a nice richness to it. See how it's darkened the edges already? Very cool. So you're going to speed up the camera as I go through this and watch me shade around everything. And I'm going to outline everything after. I'm going to look for a few spots. Like if I want it darkened a bit more, I will. Like maybe in there. Might have even forgot this spot, so I'll fix that. And you notice I walk these out a little bit because I want these shadows a little bit darker in between the cups. All right, so that's that part. So now we're going to have fun with a little bit of glue and our tag. I mean, the tag is up to you. We're going to start playing with some stamps and stuff again. So the tag, I'm going to shade exactly the same way. And, it, you know, it's, it's up to you if you want to put the tag on. 
I'm going to because I think it was kind of fun. And I think I'm going to put it down here this time. No, nope, I'm going to put it back up here where it belongs. I thought I'd like it there. And I'm going to get my Aline's Tacky Glue. The only reason you can actually stick it down with the uh, matte medium. Just it takes a little bit longer and because it's pretty heavy, it's a thick paper, I'm going to add just a little glue instead. Just to sort of reinforce it. Because that's just what I want to do. Put that there. And I'm still going to put my matte medium down just because that's what I do. I like everything stuck. I don't like them if it looks like it's peeling off. With Even if I'm going to use paper, I'm very conscious in my own right that the paper is totally becomes part of the surface. It's not lifting. It's not... Um, doesn't look like it's paper stuck on. I want it to become part of the actual project. So I'm looking for my little... Where's my little silver brush? There it is. And you notice that I have been using my black gold uh, 3-8 angular shader for the whole thing. It's it's my brush of choice um, for all my shading. The um, silver line doesn't actually have that brush that I've found. They may have, but I don't have it if they do. But I like using the silver brush line for the mixed media just because it's just a little bit sturdier. Um, I don't mind the price point is really cheap. I don't mind that they're going to get ratched. I don't mind using the adhesives and, and the paint and, and everything in these. So I quite like them. So I'm going to stick that down. I'm going to put this guy down just like so. Stick that into place. down. hope I'm still on camera. Then I'm just going to go over it with my matte medium because it'll make it the shading of it so much easier again because it's paper and, I, and if you put matte medium over anything that's paper it'll seal the paper so you don't get a, a mottled inconsistent look. There. Hold that sucker down there. And when I did it the first time, I did just use the matte medium, and it does it does adhere. I just prefer to have this stuck right down so it's not bouncing for the, the video. Either or, you'll find I use the Aline's Tacky Glue on just about everything. It actually glues the wood together and the whole kit and caboodle. Okay, so that's on there. So now, we're going to pull out some of our fun little stamps. These are stuff tainers from Stampendous and I actually thought that they were just to keep papers and stuff in until I actually learned from Stampendous that this put all your stamps in and how cool is this so you can see them you stick them inside and like that so there's the stamp that I want but they're so cool they're about yay thick and you just open, open them up you keep all your little stamps and stuff in them so you can see what you've got and I like the fact that they are difficult to open only because I'm backwards half the time. Yeah. There we go. And you open up, as long as the stamps are clean, they stick. They stick inside, which is totally awesome. So yeah, I have my fun little stamp collection here. Thank you so much to Stampendous. They are absolutely wonderful. A few things still in here. So you do them front and back, and then as long as these are clean, they stick. So you can find the stamps that you want to use. And you've actually got room in the middle for a few odds and odds. Some of the stamps, that, the background stamps that we used originally come with a little stencil, so I've kept them in here as well. And I just love this. Who knew? And then you just close it back up. And it keeps everything contained nice and tight. You can put them in a book rack or, you know, those little book holders. Snap them back together. You can abuse them. They're great to travel with. Love it. So that's what those little stuff tainers are for. If anybody's got one and never really knew what they were for. This is a, a well-loved Stampendous scroll stamp. You can use this or there's a totally fun little tool from wonderful Ranger products. Little embossed pens that you can also use that if you don't have stamps and you have you can get the embossed pens. I think you can pick them up at any any um, craft store or whatever you can actually draw your little smoke squirrelies on and and uh, 
do the embossing with that. And of course, if you don't want to do stamps or anything like that, you, if you've got a swirl stencil, you can use a swirl stencil. Any number of things. You're never limited to using exactly what we have. Here's an example of a stencil. I mean, you could use a little piece of this if you wanted, and you could just create your own little, and you could stencil it on the way we would normally stencil. So that's another way of using, um, creating the smoke and, this, and the doily and stuff like that. Same with my doily technique. You can just use the stencil. If you have like a doily stencil, you can use a stamp. You can do any, any number of things as possible. But I'm showing you today embossing because I think it's totally cool. And so with embossing, you would want, I like the big boss it because I can get right in there. You just want embossing, um, an embossing stamp pad. I have a little embossing stamp pad as well. This one's actually pink so you can see where it went. But it's kind of fun. So we're going to use this big one and we're going to actually do a little embossing. So I'm going to put, for fun right now, we're going to put this guy on here. Create a little bit of smoke. So I get my little embossing, get it wet, take that aside, and then I'm going to stamp it for the smoke. And I don't necessarily want the whole thing. Just put a bunch down, press it down. So cool. I love this. Lift it up. And I can see a little bit where it was. And if I don't want any on the uh, on the cup, I'm going to actually I'm going to do this. This is where sticky notes are so fun and come in handy. If you get some on the cup, because you want, I want to make sure that none is on the cup. I'm going to block it off, right like that. Then I'm going to take my powder. I'm going to sprinkle it on. Say a little prayer to the embossing gods, because you got to do that. Any embossing powder. I'm using, uh, this is really some really cool glittery stuff from a Stampenda set that I got. Oh, just love it. So pretty. And then you want to make sure you have a spare piece of paper somewhere so that we can put it back so you don't waste it. So I'm going to tap it off. So now you can actually see where the, where, the, where the powder is. So if you've got some someplace you don't want, you could actually wipe it off. Now, this is the fun part. That's Miss Lily. Hi, Lily. Then we take our heat gun and we're going to heat it. As you watch, you can see it all start to change color and it becomes sort of white. Heavier here, not so much there. And then, so we get our doily. We're going to get this guy out and we're going to finish off with a little bit more of the um, embossing. So we're going to do the same with this since we've got all our powders and stuff out. Get our little embossing pad. Get this. And I thought it was kind of fun because it allowed me to create a little bit of a doily effect. And I just kind of placed it in between the two hearts, pressed it down. And then, just for fun, because I could, I did little bits on the corners. Don't have to, I just did. Okay. Same thing. Get out our powder again. Pray to the gods. There we go. The thing is that you can pour a lot of this stuff out because you're going to put it all back anyway. Okay. Keep your lid on. Tap it back down into your special surface. And I'm going to show you this quickly because I don't want to blow this stuff all away. I'm going to put it back. Here, 
it almost all goes back, but you get this beautiful gold glitter stuff, which I think is so cool. It gets all over the fingers and stuff. Put this down, and we're going to heat it up again. And as you watch when you're heating, you just watch it start to get a little bit whiter, and you can tell that it's heating. dry you can see so I might go and add a little bit more in there after but I can do that once this is dry so I'm going to take my same stamp and I'm going to add a little bit to the heart and what I'm going to do with the heart is I'm going to take my my paper because I don't want to get anything on the heart or I mean ah, sorry it goes this way because I want it on the heart and not on the background so I'm going to put my paper down that's what I like about my sticky notes put it there and I'm going to take my stamp, and I don't need all of my stamp for this one because I just want to have a little bit of a, of a doily on the side of the heart. So we're going to go like so. On there. And you can actually see it. it it's wet looking, so you can actually see where it is. And then I'm going to put a little bit over here and a little bit up here, I think. And again, stamp, and there, sprinkle. This is such a fun way to embellish, you know, snowflake. Can you imagine snowflakes? sticky notes for everything. They are so good to have. There. And we heat again. up these little spots because this is, is not hot anymore. You don't want it when it's gooey. Just a little bit. Nothing fancy. It just shows you can fix it. Just wait for it to cool off a little bit. You can add a little bit more. And don't try to line the doily up because it is it is imperfect. that so now I'm just gonna let this cool off for a few minutes just it is a little bit warm but once it's once it's done it's done like it's, it's so easy so then what I wanted to do is I want to add a few little stamps 
just to embellish the, uh, the the cups. Nothing fancy. You can use whatever you happen to have. So what I did is I took the stamp that I had used for the the um, the, the smoke there, and I am going to use quinacridone gold straight up. And I'm going to stamp it. And I'm not going to stamp the whole thing. I'm just going to put color on a little bit of it. And then I just put it on there. Just as a little embellishment. And that's the nice thing is you can take off what you don't need very quickly. Okay. So that's that one. Rinse it off. And let's see. Maybe we'll put a little tire tread look on the green one with some blue. using this little thing. All my other ones are wet. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue and I'm going to do both the cup and the, the green cup and the blue cup. Different patterns of course. And just to add a little something something to the project. There. And you can wipe off any excess that you don't want add the little polka dot stencil to the blue cup because that's what I think would be kind of cool. I'll show you. It doesn't matter. You can use whatever is handy. Just add a little, you know, what? I'm going to add a little tiny bit of Payne's Gray. Just to darken them up a little bit. So with the tag with the same mixture that we had done with the um, burnt umber and the Payne's Gray, we're going to shade first around it, of course, because that's what we do. And then we're going to shade the tag itself. Okay, so there. Did the tag. And now we start outlining. And I use my, you can use a pen. I, I have never liked using a pen. That's my own personal choice. But you can certainly use a pen if you like. And then I'm just going to start outlining and defining all my, all my pieces. So we're going to do, and you, you need very little water when you use the, uh, the fluid acrylics. These, if you want to do outlining, oh my God, use these. This is so much better, I swear than uh, trying to use your regular lamp black. And I, I never do my outlining straight. If you want it straight, you can do it straight. It, that's your choice.
All the black is doing really is just defining some of the spaces. Um, it really has no real advantage. I, I like to do it. Um, it's very popular in mixed media, of course, but I've done it all the time. I've always done it. So it's, it's my personal choice. So now we're going to have a little bit of fun with one of my lids. Because we can. I don't want a lid off of something that I can get dirty. That'll work. You use the bottom of a coffee cup. You can use anything you want. We're going to add coffee stain because we need a coffee stain. So we're going to get our burnt umber. Whatever I did with that. Burnt umber. And I am going to put burnt umber on here. And then I'm going to make a little puddle with it. Because we're going to make a coffee stain. If you have a coffee stain stamp, you can use that. But you know who has that kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to take my lid into my coffee stain water over here and I'm going to put my lid in there and hope for the best. Just add a couple of little coffee stains. Don't have to if you don't want to. I just thought it would be kind of fun. First, clean your lid, because you should. Then I'm going to dry those quickly, because that's my texture sand. Okay. Then dry them. Skinner lettering stencil but if you have your own stencil or stamps you can use those and I used this for the um, X's and O's because I didn't have a stamp that was big enough you can see I've used it so we're going to put on X this is because we love espresso right I'm going to find the center and I'm going to get my stencil brush. My handy dandy little stencil brush. My little Tracy Moreau. Love these. And I'm going to go into my black. I'm going to stencil my X. And we might as well do the X. Oh, X. So put X down here on the bottom guy. Just find the center. Pop it in there. And there's an O. Oh, yeah, there's an O. Kind of guesstimate where the center is. Yes! And then I wanted to put the word love up here. So I did my love. And I'm just going to kind of line it up where I think it looks good. I'm not worried too much. L. Oh, yeah, I love that. O. black. You notice I swirl my brush around a little bit. I've talked about that in other videos. I just find that it gives me a, a nicer uh, finished look. Oh, my V got bent. Oh, no, it didn't. My v. A little bit more black, I think. Yeah, I hope you're having fun with this project. I, I, the idea of doing this really is to show you that a lot of this stuff isn't really as scary as it looks. And it's some really fun stuff that we can do. And that's sort of the idea behind doing this. Because I think it's just fun. Love. Okay. With these 
cute little tiny stamps, which I keep in a little baggie. You can get these at Michael's. They're like Michael's Hobby Lobby and everything. In their little dollar fifty or three dollar stamp bin, they have these little letter stamps in there. So freaking cute. If you don't have them, by all means, just do your lettering the way you would normally. And then we've got the little capitals here. Yep. And I just end up putting them all in a little baggie so that they're handy. Dump them out. And this is where you can actually still use your paint, your regular paint. Put a little more carbon black out. There. So the fun part is finding the letters that you want to use because. Now we're just going to spell the word espresso. Mm -hmm. Smudge my little paint around a little bit. In my fingers, we don't want to know what I've done. Okay. Dip my little, use it as an ink pad. So E and an S. We're going to do two S's. Three S's eventually. S. Oh no. Oh no. See, matte medium was on there, so we can fix that very quickly. One of the things that I love most about matte medium, look at that. You would not normally be able to do that. Need that in a gallon jug. See, the trick is pay attention to the back side, but don't put your S's on the other way, which I did. It fell off. E, S, P, P, R, helps if you can spell, E, S, P, R, E, Kind of vintagey looking, which is kind of fun. E S P R E S S. I can spell. I can spell. S S and then O. There. And that. That is it. So I hope you had a lot of fun. And uh, it is a fun project to play with and, and you know, certainly be creative and, and I hope you've found a little bit new passion for some of the new products that are out there and I will see you next time with something new and fun. Have a great day. Happy painting.